Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. So today is going to be, uh, at least for now, the final installment of my declaration review series, as I don't have B2 or B8, but by request by some of you, going to be doing the B1 today. So this is my B1 in a Franklin Star Spangled Blue handle. Uh, the Franklins are reserved for like the really big knots, so this one is a 33 millimeter, so quite large. And yeah, just get going. As you can see, there's kind of a unique code right there on the bottom, uh, as opposed to just the rest of them that just have Scott's signature, so that you can kind of tell, um, like, I think it's a serial code, so what number your batch was. I'm not too sure what this one says. But yeah, it's awesome. So we'll get going here. So the B1 is, in my opinion, really like the the king of of knots. It's pretty much everything I want from a brush. It's got super super soft tips with just a nice amount of scrub just like a touch of scrub in there so I put the amount of scrub maybe between my B5 and B6 so barely any but just enough to let you know it's there excellent backbone and especially considering the density of this knot it has a little bit less than you think. Can I just add a bunch of water? But yeah, these are pretty much perfect, or at least this one is pretty much perfect to me. And really, if you get the opportunity to buy a B1, I really suggest just getting it instead of coming here and watching this first. So maybe watch this um, just in the event you happen to stumble on one or maybe you've got a really, a really awesome, awesome friend who's willing to sell theirs. Like uh, I have to give a shout out to Spencer Frankel for allowing me to purchase his as these brushes are real unicorns. Um, you really don't find them very often. B1 and B2 especially. Um, I actually see more B, B1s available than B2s. No one seems to wanna put any B2s out. But, yeah, this is just a really, really amazing knot. Um, because of the rarity and the, I mean, really the performance is excellent as well, but really just because they're so rare, um, prices aren't going to be very good. So expect a markup if you want one. Like I said, unless you're getting it from like a good friend And they may they may just sell it to you for what they purchase it for which I always believe is the way to go rinse off my hands I don't take some of that water just trip it in okay I think I should be good to go on this lather after that but yeah, just incredible. Flow through is pretty nice too, especially considering it's a, uh, a really dense knot. Keep losing lather here. Oh yeah, this much, this much hair really just has that absolutely luxurious feel to it. 
I don't use this brush too too often as it's uh, a real soap killer I will say that kind of I guess negative if you want to count that as a negative to me that helps me out because I have all kinds of stuff I need to get through my soaps but yeah I kind of reserve this brush a little bit more for like special occasion or uh, I did use it for for just one July at least temporarily while I was trying to kill my soap but yeah I mean I wish I could break it out more but I like my variety <laughs> So, I would definitely say if you have any kind of unobtainium soap, this is not the brush to use. <laughs> as uh, you'll work through it a little bit faster than you want to, maybe. But just a quick, just kind of recap on it. So, uh, perfect amount of scrub, excellent amount of backbone, just enough to let it, yeah, you know, just let, enough to let you know it's there excellent tips uh, mine isn't super jelly to be honest but like i said that's fine it is super soft already so i barely even noticed that and flow through is quite good for the dense large knot it is so um yeah if you can get a b1 definitely do it uh the price may not be so great like i said because of rarity and just how elusive and honestly how good the knots are. Uh, but to me, they really are the king of the decorations. So that's my review on the B1. Hope you guys found that helpful. I mean, you know, if you, if you can get a B1, um, as long as it's within your means, go for it. Um, and if you don't like it, honestly, you can resell it for what you bought it for. Probably quite easily so that's it for that uh thank you for watching hope you found that review helpful i'm gonna get to my shave so uh, for my shave i thought if i'm gonna use my biggest brush might as well use my smallest razor so this is my mini 2.25 inch cutting edge near wedge 8 8 beechwood micarta scales with the abalone inlay on the scales so here we go i don't even know if this will shave me to be honest i don't remember what kind of edge i put on here i don't remember how good it was apparently good enough So, as usual with these, I have two days to grow. Cut through it okay, but we'll see how the next passes go. Is that's the... That's not Richard. But I had something I wanted to talk about, but I can't remember it at the moment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I hope you guys have been enjoying, like, the, the shape talks. Um, 
That's Richard. Oh, well, yeah. I've just been kind of focusing on um, just talk about my workouts a little bit. Um, just kind of been focusing on on trying to build some muscle um, in certain areas that I feel like I'm a little lacking. So uh, my my biceps, I try to really focus on and um kind of the the medial head of my deltoid so the the middle um so to do that i do lateral raises which you you stand with the dumbbells and you raise them to the side like that <laughs> work out my back um, as far as chest goes, I'm, I'm trying to work out the, the upper chest more. So if you see like the actors in movies, like the action movies and um, fitness models and, and you know, guys with really that kind of, that square looking chest, um, it's because they have good development in the upper portion or the clavicular head of the chest so it's called the clavicular head because it, uh, it inserts on the clavicle or collarbone so it's this portion right here and uh, building that up kind of gives it like I said that square look and I feel like that's what most people lack. So in order to do that, I've been focusing on movements that really hit that part of my chest. So um, incline dumbbell bench, that's pretty much my favorite movement. Um, although it's not, it's technically a little bit more effective at hitting that part than the flat bench. But um, it's technically not the most effective movement for the upper chest as far as pressing goes. Technically, that would be the reverse grip, like bench press. So you can either do incline or uh, flat. But that reverse grip really uh, targets that upper chest more. Sorry if you guys don't really care about like aesthetics or... <laughs> anything like that or proportions and But yeah, that's uh, just kind of what I've been focusing on a little bit more um, for my back stuff. I love doing pull-ups. I think at least, even if you don't really care. About the aesthetics and everything so much. I think pull-ups are an excellent exercise that you should just strive to do because um, I don't want to get into like functional training because technically every movement is functional, you know, you're just training yourself to get stronger so there's no way that's not functional, but um, pull-ups are, you know, really just fundamental. A very natural movement for the body just pulling yourself up so it's really useful just you never know when you're gonna have to pull yourself up and get over something or you know
Yeah, I think I kind of did this edge a while ago before I got my my honing down a little bit more. So it's doing its job, but I think I may. Decide to take it back on stones. Yeah, I mean, it's cutting underneath my jawline and everything, but yeah, just around the mustache area. Not quite as clean as I'd like it to be. But anyway, so, um, kind of just talk about workout splits a little bit, I guess. So, really, the way you structure your program is going to be very dependent on how often you like to go so you can do what's called your typical bro splits <laughs> so bro splits are dividing the body up into five separate parts so monday would be chest day and that's mondays are known as international chest day that's when everybody does chess um mostly Unfortunately, I do it too. That's just the way I, I don't know why I program myself like that, but that's what I did. And now I have to fight for a bench on Monday with everyone else. But so Monday would be chest, Tuesday would be back, uh, Wednesday would be arms, Thursday shoulders, Friday legs, something along those lines, you know. Just an example, you can mix and match as you as you desire. But that's your, your typical bro split. And depending on what your goals are, bro splits aren't always the best. I'm not saying there's anything you know inherently wrong with bro splits and if that's what you do and it works for you then cool um for most or most of the videos that i've seen at least on uh like the research side say that there's not quite enough frequency on a bro split to see uh, maximal hypertrophy which is a lot of science right there but um, basically what that's saying is you're not working out your muscles often enough to see the maximum results from you know working out so if building muscle is your goal the bro split may not be what's best for you um, talk about my split here I run a seven day, um, seven day split with uh, push, pull, legs. So what that means is uh, um, oh, what that means is on one day I'm using my push muscles. So um, just think like any kind of push movements you're doing with your upper body. Um, legs are a separate thing. So I'm doing my pressing movements. Uh, so my chest, my triceps, for my shoulders, I don't really shoulder press because when I, when I do my benching, it works. So when you shoulder press, you're using a lot of what's called the anterior deltoid. So you're getting a lot of anterior delt work right there. And uh, when you press, you also get a lot of anterior delt work. And uh, just genetically, my anterior delts are pretty, pretty big. So I don't really shoulder press too much. Um, that's just me. Shoulder pressing has never been a movement I've really focused on too much. So, yeah, when I do my shoulders, mostly focusing on lateral raises, and then I do um, 
I do actually do some pull movements on my push day just because I like getting some frequency on them which are um, rear delt rows so I'm using a bar um, doing a row movement but I'm coming towards the upper part of my chest and that's helping me build the back part of my shoulder right there and then uh, face pulls and off the recommendation of uh, one of the channels I watched or I watch currently uh, they said that it would be a good idea to do face pulls every day so a face pull is is you use a rope attachment on the cable machine you grab it thumbs facing you and you pull that way so you're pulling towards your face face pull <laughs> but They recommended face pulls every day because most people's lifestyles lead them to be very rounded forward. You know, you're on your keyboard, you're on your phone, you're writing, you're doing stuff. So you're very hunched forward all the time, very, you know, shoulders rotated forward. So doing the face pulls helps you keep the scapula retracted and helps you maintain better posture. So it's strengthening those postural muscles. That's a pimple right there. So if you're someone who's already exercising um, and working out, I'd suggest just trying to incorporate maybe face pulls into every single workout. So when I do my, um, my chest, shoulders, triceps workout, I do it immediately after my shoulders. When I do my pull workouts, so I'll cover that in a second, I just do it um, towards the end before I do my bicep work. And then when I do legs, I just do it at the very end of the workout on its own. So for pull, I'm doing um, back and biceps, a um, little bit of rear delts. Like I said, I still do that rear delt row and face pulls. I just don't do the lateral raises, give my um, medial head a break. Uh, so for pull, As I said earlier, I really, really like pull-ups. Um, they're probably one of my favorite exercises. And if you can't do pull-ups, you know, no worries. Um, just try to work up to them at least. So I noticed most gyms nowadays have some kind of assisted pull-up machine. So you put your feet or put your legs on something that helps raise you. So just use that to help work your way up to doing pull-ups. Like my, my little cousin, I just got him into the gym. First started, he couldn't do any. He was using like 70 pounds to help assist him up. And now he can do, you know, just a couple, but he can do pull-ups now. So. I think people get a little too caught up on what they can do now. Uh, you gotta think of the gym as progression, you know? So just because you can't do something now doesn't mean you can't work towards it. And you know, that's why most people are going to the gym anyway, to get stronger, get a little bit physically better. Um, well, you know, that's, that may be not be 
the best choice of words just because you're working out doesn't mean you're better or anything just get physically stronger just improving your physical fitness so going with the match and splash the cock juice um, but yeah so I do pull-ups I do some kind of rowing movement so that's pulling the weight towards like your torso so here and pulling um, And then I do a couple bicep exercises, and then lastly is legs. And when I do legs, um, I have trouble fitting into pants already, <laughs> so I I don't do a ton of volume for my legs. I'm really not trying to grow them too much. I'm just trying to get them a little stronger. So I'm doing uh, heavy sets of squats, heavy sets of deadlifts, and uh, one calf exercise just to kind of balance it all out. And like I said, at the very end of the workout, doing baseballs so that's how I do my training um, my body's really used to that super high frequency so I do so it's a three day three different workouts I do it for six days and then on uh, Sundays like today at the recording of this video I normally go to a uh, jiu-jitsu class I'm trying to start up into that pick that up really fun so far but anyway um, so it's like a active rest day um, I'm, I'm resting from you know weight lifting and training like that but I'm still doing something active so yeah that's how I do my training split but that's really high frequency so if that doesn't work for you you know feel free you can put a rest day in there you can do whatever you need to um, just do pretty much what works for you what you can keep up with maybe at the beginning you start with less frequency so you maybe just go like three times a week or so and then as you progress as you get better you can increase your frequency so um, like I said training is all about progression and improving and just don't worry about you know not maybe not being able to do something immediately as your body adjusts to training stimulus as it gets stronger um, you'll be able to do more so yeah, just just don't think of training as like something immediate just think of it as progression over long term because um, you know if you want to be if you want to succeed in your fitness and all that stuff it's a long-term goal not just immediate but um, yeah anyway gonna quit rambling thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the shape hope you enjoyed the review of the let me just rinse it off real quick because it was soapy the B1, this handle is absolutely gorgeous. Star Spangled Blue. Um, yeah, just crazy. The, the depth, unfortunately, does not come out on the camera, as with most brushes. But yeah, just a fantastic knot. And uh, yeah, if you came for the review, stuck till the end, thanks for watching. Hope you found at least something informative. And you know, like I said, hopefully this is kind of helping you out. Um, if you guys have any fitness questions or anything you'd like me to try and go over, like any kind of unknowns that you may have, I'd be happy to go over it with you. <clears throat> Maybe um, provide like a link to a video or something. So leave that in the comments if you're curious about anything. But uh, yeah, this is way too long. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to catch you in the next one. See ya.